Now, this is one of the big ones. The Women Elite Cyclocross World Championships are on Saturday, where we will decide who is the new queen of cyclocross, the new world champion. With Lucinda Brandt looking to defend her title, will she do it? Or can one of her compatriots take the win? Or will the Dutch somehow be defeated by a daring challenger from a faraway land? Last year in Ostende, it was finally Lucinda Brandt's time to shine. After a few near misses on the rainbow bands, Brandt capped off an utterly dominant season with a stint in rainbow. Last year she got the better of Annemarie Worst and Denise Betzema on what was an all orange podium. Behind Clara Honzinger rode a very impressive race to finish fourth. Yara Kastelein was fifth and Céline del Calman Alvarado was sixth on her world title defence. Twelve months later and the role of favourite once again lays on the shoulders of Lucinda Brandt. Brandt has been awe inspiringly good this year, blowing the competition apart week after week. She leads all three major competitions for the second year running. Mariana Voss is the only rider who's been able to regularly beat Brandt. The seven time world champion has only raced nine times this year, but has taken a victory at a remarkable five of those races, four World Cups and the Dutch national title. Voss has 12 world titles to her name across disciplines, the last of those being the 2014 Cyclocross World title. Since then she's achieved four more world championship podiums, three in cross, despite struggling with a lot of bad luck and some injury. However this year Voss has been back to her absolute best. It's hard to call a 12 time world champion and all around the most successful cyclist of all time in the form of her life, but she is pretty close to her effortless best. Of course the Dutch are so comically strong that even outside of these two they still have a roster full of potential winners, or they would be if not for some more Covid news. Denise Betsema finished second in the World Cup overall this year and has numerous podium finishes to her name, but after feeling ill in the preparation to her flight to America, Betsema has decided not to risk the chances of her teammates and is therefore not travelling to the USA. In a similar vein, Annemarie Worst took the Cuxada World Cup and numerous other podiums, but on the eve of travelling to Fayetteville, she became the second major rider after Quinton Hermans to test positive for Covid. It says a lot that the fifth and sixth names on the list of the Dutch riders are a former world champion and a former European champion. Céline del Calman Alvarado and Yara Kostelein have both suffered with injury this season, but both seem to be Covid free and are actually in America. Alvarado has dealt with back issues throughout the year, whilst Yara Kostelein suffered a fractured wrist in Kortrijk back in November. But nonetheless, this course does suit both, especially Kostelein, and with Worst and Betsema missing, a chance to middle is suddenly presenting itself for these two. The chance of a non-Dutch winner is not extraordinarily high, but if it were to come, the most likely person to deliver it could just be a quiet young kid from a small town in Hungary. Blanka Vash might just be the most talented female cyclist in the world right now. There is essentially nothing she can't do, especially now she's had a season of backing from the world's best women's team, SD Works, and is being coached by former world champion Lars Bohm. Vash has two under 23 medals to her name, a silver from Dubendorf and a bronze from last year in Ostende. At the Euros this year, she decided to move up to the elites, despite being only 20. At the Euros this saw her take a European silver medal, the best cyclocross result in Hungarian history. Would Vass medal at the Worlds? A distinct possibility. She'd be only the second Hungarian to take a medal at any cycling world championships. Laszlo Bodrogi is the only other one to have done so, taking a silver and a bronze at the time trial world championships in respectively 2000 and 2007. Vass has been riding her way into some good form again after a somewhat subdued guest period. In Hoge Heide she looked back up to her best and was the only elite rider able to follow Brandt and Voss. Peter Sutton van Empel won't be riding this race, they're still doing the under 23s. Vass finds a course that suits her pretty well, she's punchy and has a good enough engine to follow, and luckily this year's course has no giant beach for her to get lost in. The other riders looking to rock the orange submarine are the home riders, Canada's Magalie Rochette and the USA's Clara Honsinger. Magalie Rochette has probably had the best season of her career this year. 
After years of almosts and not quites, this year everything just seemed to click and Cross's happiest racer charged to two World Cup podiums in Besançon and Val d'Isolle. Rochette has made no secret of her big goal over the past couple of years being a podium here in Fayetteville and whilst I think it's still an ambitious target, this place doesn't suit Rochette's abilities 100%, she is in with a very real shout. It is the World Championships after all, anything can happen. Meanwhile, Clara Honsinger will be looking to improve on her fourth place finish last year. Honsinger is America's cyclocross golden girl and will be carrying the nation's hopes on her back. That hope would be to sneak a podium finish. Clara would need the weather to suit her though. In the apocalyptic race back in October, around this place, Honsinger took third. And if it gets wet again, suddenly the American is a very real favourite to maybe even take the whole thing. Honsinger's big weakness is her lack of punch. She doesn't accelerate very quickly, and usually on courses that are dry and fast, this does make her a bit of a non-feature. Think back to Ruckfen and Tabor, for example. However, Fayetteville is very long and winding. It's lots of flowing corners, and only a few places where you really come to a standstill and have to get going again. Combine that with the long, steep drags on some parts of the course, and the Oregonian could put a smile on some home faces. I'd absolutely love to see it happen. You of course can also never rule out a former world champion, never mind a former triple world champion. Sonic Gant completed a three-peat in the rainbow bands by winning in Biel, Valkenburg and Bogenza, but in recent years she struggled a little bit to reach those heights, and nobody has quite been able to put a finger on why. She is no longer the all-winning machine of four years ago, but Gant is absolutely not to be underestimated. The best of the Belgians is most suited to muddy courses, Kant is still really good with her power output, so if it gets wet, expect the Belgian to fight for a podium. And then you have the Italians, the old guard of Eva Lechner and the new blood of Silvia Persico. Lechner has picked up good form over recent weeks, picking up top 10s in Flamanville and Hogerheide, whilst Persico recently beat Lechner to become Italian champion. She then promptly showed off her new kit by finishing 5th in Flamanville and spending a while in 2nd in Hogerheide eventually finishing a fairly strong 7th place. The French eyes will be on Hélène Clausel, who has had arguably her best season in cross to date, finishing 9th in the World Cup overall. Clausel performed well in America in the early season and has kept wrapping up top 10s throughout the year. Finally, we have the retiring legend of the sport. Katerina Nash has been racing cross for some 14 years and at 44, is finally hanging up her bike as a professional athlete. Nash has seven World Cup victories to her name, making her the joint most successful Czech crosser in World Cup history, an achievement she shares with none other than Zdenek Stibar. Only six women have more World Cup victories to their name than Nash. For Nash, who is nowadays as much an American as she is Czech, this weekend will all be about her final send-off as a racer, as she focuses herself into various UCI commissions post-retirement. Nash is not necessarily a favourite to finish highly, even if she did manage an impressive 10th place in October here. But she is a true legend of the spot, and she deserves a proper send-off, which she will undoubtedly get in Fayetteville. As mentioned earlier in the video, the true favourites here are Lucinda Brandt and Mariana Voss. This course suits riders with a strong road engine, and these two are probably the most prominent road riders on the women's side of cross. Combine that with the fact that they've also just outright been the best crossers this year, it's basically impossible to look past them. However, picking between these two is incredibly difficult. They're so evenly matched that I really don't know what to say, but I think that I'll go for Mariana Voss, entirely because Voss is one of them people who can just sort of disassociate from reality in order to win and we saw it in Paris-Roubaix earlier last year when it didn't quite pan out and we've seen her do it before as well in other races where she just seems to switch off and enter some sort of zen mode of pure unbridled anger that allows her to go faster than anyone else. I've not seen Brandt be pushed that far yet in her career so I don't know if she's also able to do it so I think Voss is just sheer will to win could pull her over the line. 
if anybody can hang on to these two, I think it'll be Blanca Vash. Vash has shown herself to have the engine to race finales on the road. Hell, with better positioning, she takes a medal at the Worlds in Lerva last year. Fayetteville suits Vash quite well, and she does have a history of at least being pretty good on the big occasions, so I think that she could perform quite well. I do secretly think slash hope for a surprise Clara Honsinger performance, but unless the weather predictions take a huge swing and we get a downpour, it would have to take a career-defining performance from Honsinger for her to be a major feature at the front. We can all hope though, of course. Speaking of the weather, as I've alluded to, the course should be pretty dry. People talk of it being quite slick though due to the course freezing overnight and therefore being a bit damp early in the morning. So it's looking like we'll either get a pan-flat frozen raceway or we'll see a bunch of the corners ripped up by the two preceding races on a slightly, slightly wettish ground. The women will take to the battlefield, whatever it may look like, on Saturday the 29th of January at half past two local time. In the UK this is half past eight and in Western Europe that makes for a 9.30 start. Both the elite races look like absolute scorchers. They're completely unpredictable. It should be some of the best races we've seen in years. You absolutely do not want to miss these races. I'll see you there on Saturday.